Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about my switch from AM to GL, so from Aftermath to Gamer Legion. I'm going to give you guys a lot of behind the scenes, a lot of, um, you know, kind of what I expect the future to look like, and just everything about the switch so you guys aren't left in the dark. This is what I have in store, so we're going to start with what was AM, what I was looking for in GL, how did the switch happen, team year events, 1v1 events, immediate and distant future, uh, what I expect, and obviously the conclusion, and I think it's good to shake things up, and that's something I'm gonna be talking about at the end. Uh, and in the background, I have just a random game, Me vs. Viper and NEC. Um, uh, it's a decent length game, so if you obviously care about NEC spoilers, leave, but there's not anything big, it's just one game. And yeah, we're gonna hop in, I'll play that. These are actually on my gameplay channel. You can see, like, I have like the point of view as well. If you guys are interested, you can check those out uh, on Hera Gameplay. But anyway, selling out is not part of the video. Let's talk about the Switch from Aftermath to Game Legion. So we'll start. Uh, first of all, I will say, I'm actually very excited and very happy to join GL. And uh, I really look forward to what the future holds. And I thank GL for the opportunity. And I thank AM for the past five years and uh, what it has meant for me to be a part of you know their crew. Um, and I'll talk about the topics we have. So it's a good way to open up the video. And I, I truly mean that. So what was AM? AM was basically just a group of guys that were really good at the game and that played together. That is basically it. No sponsor, no infrastructure, no equipment, no structure, no, not, not even a captain. We don't even have like a, a team lead. We just five guys that were really good at playing the game and that we grew together by playing together. And I was actually the last guy to join. It was Hart, Leary, and MBL that made it for a Black Forest tournament way back in the day. Then Nikov joined, then I joined. And I came in as the weakest member and I slowly, you know, rose and, and grew as a player as they did. And, you know, five years later, we're now all five of us are like easily top 20. Some of us fluctuating higher than others. And we're now in a situation where, you know, we we've have we had a lot of growth over the last five years and each guy had their own journey. However, uh, in those last five years, it went you know from an amateur scene, the AV scene to a more professional scene with a focus on content creation specifically. And uh, tournaments, although they gotten much better than what they were back in the day, as players got older, you had to think about your livelihood. And so tournaments, although the price was decent, it's believe it or not, not even close to live off for most people. I would say like you have you have to live off tournaments only if you have like a really good exchange rate of you know USD to your local currency. If you don't, uh, if you live in Europe, for example, or most places in Europe, it's gonna be really hard for you to sustain a living off just tournaments. And so most players naturally understood that you either go tournaments plus content creation or tournaments plus full-time job. Take Jordan, he went the full-time job routes after trying content creation. Me and Viper are in content creation, for example. And then you have a whole bunch of you know people in the mix or people just trying to figure things out, especially the younger guys are coming in, they're looking to break into the scene. You have a, a whole bunch of different scenarios. Each guy has their own story and their own situation. Uh, but for the AM guys, a lot of them went the route that was not content creation. Although some of them do have like a stream and, and some small you know YouTube channels that they post here and there. They're not nearly as consistent as, you know, as I was and as I wanted others on my team to be. Uh, in the last couple of years, I've really been craving like doing collaborations, doing extra content that's not just like 1v1 Arabia. And as you can see from my YouTube channel, I've really mixed it up. I mean, we've come up with some really good stuff. The 1v4s, the top five videos, the edited content. My YouTube channel has peaked so hard and is continuing to do so well. Every month is breaking the next, by the way. So thank you to you guys on YouTube for watching. But I've just had such a blast doing it as well. Like I, I add on my own video. I, I better be getting paid for this YouTube. I swear to God. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> but I've just had a blast doing YouTube in general. And um, yeah, I, I really just have been loving, you know, mixing up the contents. And uh, collaborations just aren't possible if most of my teammates in AM were either you know full time job somewhere else or just not in the same headspace is you know doing youtube for me you know they can do a couple collaborations here and there but because they're not very well known on youtube the, you know the collaborations are limited and they're not as dedicated so we can't do them very often and so in my mind it's just not a, a good space to build something solid and consistent and creating a new series with other members just because they're not going to be nearly as committed and so that was truly what i was craving and what I didn't have in AM. So I had two options and I actually explored both of them extensively. One option was finding an esports team, a sponsor uh, for AM 
because that gets us a lot more motivation, uh, especially for some other members of the team. I didn't need any, but you know, for example, other people that had a full-time job, if I get all of, all of a sudden like a monthly salary from like a big esports team or just some opportunities uh, or even just something a bit more legit, all of a sudden, you know, you can maybe justify quitting your job and going full-time. And that was one of the ideas I had. We looked for two years. I even did some crazy stuff. I was like joining discords, messaging on Twitter, messaging on Discord, all kinds of esports organizations, the big one, Fnatic, e G2, etc. you name it. I even had a contact with G2 from a member of the community. We tried something there. They reached out and they said, or they replied and they said, uh, you know, we're not interested right now, but they appreciated, the, you know, that we reached out to them. So that was like pretty decent. It was pretty cool. But we got nothing in two years until we got a private sponsor that was willing to, you know, help us out and build something with AM. And that was, you know, pretty exciting. And at the same time, I got an offer from GL. And long story short, after some negotiations, I decided to go with the GL route just because I felt like if we went with the AM route, uh, then I'd be kind of taking a gamble. Will, you know, the teammates commit hard? Will, you know, will it be enough of an incentive to really go for it? Or should I just go for GL, where I'm almost guaranteed to get into a team with three full-time content creation uh, creators and a team that, in my opinion, is doing amazing things for the scene. There's no doubt. I mean, GL, they have the custom scenario once a month. That's a now official part of the game. They have the GL YouTube channel. They've sponsored multiple events or helped sponsor multiple events like NEC. They took a part in the Grand Melee. They've sponsored show matches. They hosted Holy Cup. There's no doubt that GL is doing so much for the scene. And I decided to go with GL. And actually, AM guys were super understanding. We had a call. I laid it all out. We talked it out open. That's how we like to do things. Everything on the table. You know, no feelings. Let's talk about like the, the situation. And... Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think that was the best way to do it. They were super, super kind about it as well. Super, you know, real with me. And uh, they basically said, just choose what, you know, you think is best for you and we'll go from there. We'll, we'll, we'll see what the future holds. So super cool from them. We left on really good terms. And I say left, I won't be playing with AM, but you'll see as I talk in the 1v1 events, I can still be practicing with them. I can still play show matches with them here and there. It's not like we're, we cut ties 100%, right? Uh, and that's something that it's important for even the viewers to keep in mind. Okay, so that I talked about what was AM. Talked about what, what I was looking for in GL, uh, and I even spoke a little bit about how the switch happened. Now let's talk about team game events uh, and show matches and then 1v1 tournaments. How will this work? So a lot of confusion. And there's a sentiment that team game tournaments are dead because now it's like, oh, Viper Hair on the same team. How can you beat them? It's like, are people forgetting about like the Chinese team, the Finnish team, uh, the new teams like Fox and the Amigos, there's like a lot of good teams that have like recently formed and are putting up good numbers. So I don't think the team game scene is dead at all. And as far as AM being dead, or the rivalry between AM, GL, and team events, I kind of disagree there too. It's like I left AM. They're not going to put little Timmy in the pocket position and to replace me. And they're not going to put some 1400 respectfully to you guys. They're going to put Hart and 1800. No, I'm kidding. They're going to put Hart. The very top tier player, they're going to put Nikov, you know, they still have four top tier players. And it's not like the team just immediately drops like four levels. I think the biggest like damage I did by leaving was I was like the shot caller on the team for team game events. And I was potentially the gateway for them to get like a, an esports team and a sponsor. Maybe now they have to work harder. But hey, maybe with me leaving, now that I'm not like helping out there, one of them just steps up and just does the role that I was doing. I was the guy you know, messaging esports teams, maybe they can try, maybe they'll get lucky, who knows? It's just a numbers game at the end of the day. It's just a, you, you just have to like hit the right person at the right time, right? And so I feel like it's the kind of thing where team events are still gonna be just as exciting. In fact, I think it'll be more exciting. I talked about the shake things up in the conclusion there. I think shaking things up for the ABC scene is gonna be great. We've had AM for, and GL for like five years. If I join GL, all of a sudden I have so many different matchups that could come up. And I'm personally very excited for that. As far as GL as well, like me playing with GL, I, I can't just come in and, you know, bench, like, I don't know, doubt or something and then take the role and everything flows perfectly. I have zero synergy with them. I barely play with them. They've been playing for like years. And so I have to earn my spot in the team events, work hard and kind of like break my way into the team. And that's a really exciting challenge. I'm looking forward to it. Obviously, I expect them to, you know, give me some opportunities to, to play off me and kind of see how, how things flow and how the synergy is. Uh, and I'm sure we're going to grow as a team um, over the next one or two years. And I'm, like I said, really excited for that dynamic and something I think that would produce a lot of fun times and, 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 and games for the viewers. 
As far as 1v1 events, uh, I think 1v1 events will be unchanged. I already practiced with everyone, pretty much. And like, I, I don't practice with like Viper, really. Not I have in the past, but I don't regularly practice with them. Not because of any particular reason, just because our time zones just we rarely line up. I practice at nights. Um, and I don't think that's going to change. I think I'll still practice with AM guys. I'll still practice with ACCM with Yo. I'll still practice with GL guys. And the only thing I see changing is like, if we do a bootcamp with GL, okay, then I'll obviously practice with like pure GL because... We're all together in the same room and that would be a fun dynamic Let, let's see what what that would bring i'm excited for that as well so for 1v1 events i don't think much will change except like the public perception oh it's gl viper versus gl hera I, I besides the name i don't think anything's changing i mean like you see in the background it, no one's going easy it's like it's still the same uh situation uh and i think it's just like for gl for game religion they just gain more having you know representation at the higher spots and i hope to continue to bring that uh and and i do want like i i'm the kind of guy like i see gl doing good things and i want to be a part of them i want to help them as much as they, as much as i can and bring as much value to the table as possible to help them do bigger and better things for our aw2 scene it's like a give and take that i think creates a really wholesome and really um a really solid future and i hope to provide that value for them and i've actually spoken with the gl guys not like the players but like the organization guys and they love aw2 they're like long time diehard players and fans and when i saw that i was like this is a good sign passion first always succeeds and i, and I really love that so that, that gets me like triple excited over over the new team uh and as far as immediate future uh versus distant future and immediate future i want to do collaborations with the gl players another ad i swear to god this is crazy uh, i want to do collaborations with the gl players um put our heads together potentially we create a series not like a podcast because we have the gl podcast but like just you know different series on youtube that hopefully can click well that can be reoccurring since we're all full-time and dedicated there's no reason why we can't put out some content together that the viewers will enjoy viper's got a full-time editor i've got a full-time editor we have really big channels maybe we can think of something that could be really fun potentially i don't know this is maybe like a fool's optimism for me i don't know what to expect and i don't want to make promises but that's what i'm hoping for and that's what i really want to push for uh and i think in general more collaborations is a really good thing for the av2 scene uh we're all like we all get along we're all like pretty good friends Let's put that on the table for the viewers to enjoy as well. It's not like, okay, Viper's there, I'm there. You either pick one. It's like, no, nah, like we can, you know, we can merge for at least like some videos here and there and kind of show the community what we can do together. So I think it's really cool. Like I said, no plans, but this is kind of like, you know, just what I hope for. And as far as distant future, uh, I, I feel like it's going to be, you know, hard to tell. But I, I hope for a situation where... I get something like I got out of AM for me personally, where I can grow as a person, as a player, uh, deepen my bonds with some of the GL players, and um, and you know, just enjoy the, the the journey pretty much, and and see where that takes me. And as far as like distant future for the AW2 scene, I think the more GL succeeds, the more they can, uh, you know, put more uh, you know into tournaments, into events, into show matches, the better it is for the AW2 scene. Synergy like that is what I'm looking for. But again, we can't really read the future, so we don't know for sure what's happening. But that's kind of what I hope for. And in conclusion, like I said earlier, I think it's really good to shake things up. AAB2 has been in a situation where it's AM versus GL for so long. And me joining uh, GL doesn't, in my opinion, break the rivalry. I just think that it creates a different dynamic. And let's see what this new dynamic will bring to the table. I'm excited to play show matches with the GL guys on voice. I'm excited to... Um, you know, just, you know, be around the videos that they make maybe after tournaments, the podcast, that kind of stuff, and just be part of that. And I'm excited for, you know, the opportunities that's to come. And the last thing I'll talk is that I'll talk about is that like GL as an organization, they've got like cameramen, they've got equipment. We could make like really nice, uh, vlogs. And actually they inspired me to pick up, we picked up a camera, new microphone, and we're going to be doing some vlogs just for the YouTube channel here. Um, and you know, the more LAN events that come our way, the more we'll have opportunities for vlogs, real life content, and, um, you know, just a bit more of a different side of the coin for Age of Empires, the, the gameplay, and then the real life side. I think that's really cool and really exciting. So big things to come for me personally, invested in some new equipment, new team, you know, GL. And, uh, I think for the AV2 scene, I think, uh, if things go well and if things continue to trend in the right way. I think some really cool things can can come to play and uh, i've heard rumors but that's all i can say for now thank you so much for watching guys uh hopefully you guys enjoyed and hopefully you guys are as excited as me on this new journey and i'll end the video by giving once again a big shout out to the am guys 
um, for you know everything we've done together in the last few years. And a big thank you to GL for accepting me into the team and offering me a spot here. And it's gonna be, um, yeah, it's gonna be a really exciting uh, couple of years ahead, I'm sure. So thank you all, and we'll see what the future holds for us. Peace. Thank you.